But say this, say, I am blessed. I am blessed. In spite of what the devil tries to say, I am blessed. I am prosperous. And I am victorious. You hear that, devil? There is nothing, nothing you could do or say that's going to change who I am. Because I am who God says I am. And I can be who God says I can be. Therefore, I can have what God says I can have. If you believe that tonight, give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, get your Bibles, your tablets, your, your phones, and you may be seated tonight. Glory to God. No, used to we just say, used to get your Bibles. You know? My, now you just have to, you know, be specific. Come on, get your tablets and get your phones. Everybody, nobody can say, well, he didn't say get my phone. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, it is good. Listen to me. It is good that you follow along when there are scriptures being presented. Amen? Amen. Just don't take it for just because somebody says it. Get the hold of it. I mean, of course, we, you know, here at Victor Life, it's not always everywhere I go, but here at Victor Life, they throw up on the screen. So you, if you don't have your... Well, you might as well forget it. Everybody's got a cell phone, so never mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we're excited. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I wish the circumstances were a little different, but I'm still glad I'm here. Amen. Amen. And, but it is great to see my dad overcoming in every area. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I have a phrase, and I want you to remember this phrase. And every time you see him, I want you to say this. Because I've been telling him this now for, for almost two months. I said, Dad, 2020 strong. Come on now. He's, got, he's still got a few more procedures left this year, and then he's going to be done. And so we're going to go in. He's going to go into 2020 strong. All right. Come on now. Well, and you can grab a hold of that too. That's not just for him. Come on now. But I believe that we as a body of Christ, we're going to go into 2020 strong. Mighty, victorious, overcomers. Huh? Why? Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I'm excited again. Like I said, I'm excited about being here. And uh, uh, we're getting ready, uh, getting ready to leave the country again here shortly. I'm um, headed to uh, Kenya. We're going to be doing a crusade. You know, I just got back from England uh, back this summer, and, and now we're headed to Kenya. And uh, doors are opening actually all over the world. We're having to pick and choose the timing and where we're supposed to be. And uh, they've been trying to get me there for three years. And, uh, and so that we believe that this is the timing and God's um, connected us with the right that I feel comfortable with. You know, you need to feel comfortable. Yeah. Hallelujah. And uh, just don't be taking invitations just because, you, you know, you get invitations. I mean, literally, I get invitations every single day to go overseas somewhere. And... Uh, so we just have to be very, very um, conscious and very protective of the anointing. Amen. Amen. And just because somebody gives you an invitation doesn't mean you're supposed to go. That's in anything, not just overseas, but that's in anything. Right. You know, I, I mean, just like myself, I was, when, I, when I was raising my kids, I was very protective of whose houses they went to. I wouldn't let them spend the night with folk. You know, that's why I had what I had, and I just had them come over there. They can come over there and play and do what they need to do there, you know, and I would, I would cook out, and I would, you know, do different things for them to make it, make it presentable there for them and have a good time. But I just, I was very, I was very careful and very protective, you know, because I, you just don't know. Um, people, just because they look like and act like one way in church, don't mean their home life's that way. Come on now, amen. And... Uh, so, you know, you just have to be very protective. So I'm very protective over the anointing. I'm very protective who I even allow in my atmosphere. Amen. Just because they got some initials in front of their names, yeah. R-E-V or M-I-N or P-S, come on now, doesn't mean that they're going to, I'm going to befriend them or I'm, they're going to be a part of my life. Amen. Amen. And so I am very protective. I'm very choosy who I allow in my circle. Um, I live a very close-knit circle. I have a lot of acquaintances, but I have very few friends. Amen. Let me say that again. I say I have a lot of acquaintances, but I have very few friends Amen. that I would consider true friends. Um, matter of fact, I can, they, they don't even go past two hands. 
and I travel all the world. I'm around people all the time. But as far as true friends, um, I'm very protective. I probably can not live more than one hand. Uh, because, you know, you can only allow so many people to speak into your life. Huh? Come on now. Uh, I don't allow acquaintances to speak into my life. And also, let me just say this. And this is nothing to do with my message. I'm just uh, listening to the Holy Spirit right now. I am very careful who I allow to pray with me. Huh? People come up, they say, can I pray with you? And if I don't know them, I say, no, I appreciate it. You can pray, but you're not going to, you know, I'm not going to grab hold hands or I'm not going to allow them to put their hands on me and pray with me. Just not. You know, just because they say that they love God doesn't mean, come on now. Hallelujah. So we need to be very protected. That's why I love about Victor Life Church. You know you come into a safe place. Amen. Amen. And that's why there's times that we have altar calls and, and times for prayer, you know, because you know that if you're coming up to the altar, people that are going to lay hands on you, you know that they're seasoned and you know that they're anointed. Come on now. And, and, they, mean, and they mean well for you. Now, there's no harm. There's no hidden agendas. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, tonight, um, if you would, go ahead and uh, let's just, let's, let me see where I want to go. I want to, let's just do this first. Go to um, Luke's Gospel, chapter 7. And uh, I'm just going to read this part because my brother had mentioned um, when he was up here sharing about the battle and everything. And, and just this scripture came apart. I mean, I'm going to start there and we're going to see if the Holy Spirit continues down this path. But in, in Luke's Gospel, chapter, in, uh, chapter 7 and verse 16, and I'll read it from the King James Version first, and then we'll read it from the Message Bible. Now, understanding this particular verse is after the fact, because um, I was here last year, when I was here last year teaching on Wednesday night, I ministered on compassion. How do you remember the, the message on compassion? Well, that's three of you. All right. Man, I could have preached that again tonight. <laughs> but anyway, um, when I was ministering on compassion, it, 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 the, word, the Lord began to deal with me um, in this vein, and I've actually uh, been in this vein now for three months, and so everywhere I go, I'm preaching every week, and so everywhere I go, I've been in this vein, and I just was in um, Charlottesville, uh, Virginia this past week, and so we were there ministering and, and still continuing to stay in that vein because actually compassion is the key ingredient, or actually is the missing ingredient for your faith to work. Amen. And without compassion, you're not going to experience miracles. You're not going to experience signs and wonders. You're not even going to experience joy without compassion being prevalent in your life. Amen. Come on now. And so at this particular time in, the, in, this, in, in this chapter 7, there's a story that, that is presented that, you know, the, lady, the widow lady who had a son that was dead. And the, Jesus, and the scripture goes on to say that Jesus was moved with compassion. Or full, actually, it says he was full. Everybody say full. So that tells me if Jesus had to be, be full of compassion, that means that we need to be full. Yes. But it also means this. When you see the word full, that means if you, there's a word full, there's also a word empty. That's, right. That's why Jesus had to separate himself at different times to go get full of compassion. Amen. How many know people wear you out? Amen. People will drain you. You know what I'm saying? People will drain you. They'll wear you out. And a lot of times you're trying to figure out why your prayers aren't working or you're not seeing the results of your prayer. The first key factor to check on is your compassion. How is your compassion? Because your compassion affects everything. It affects your attitude, but it also affects your receiving. Come on now. Compassion affects your attitude, but it also re um, affects your receiving. And, um, and also your presentation. Three things. Your presentation of faith. So your presentation of faith is, is irrelevant and will not become relevant unless compassion is present. That's right. Because if you know the story of life of Christ, did you know this, um, that Jesus didn't teach anything different than the Pharisees and Sadducees taught? I'm going to mess with your head. He did not teach anything. He taught the same, he taught out of the same Torah, he taught out of the same book, the same thing that the priests taught, the Pharisees taught, and the Sadducees taught. So what was the difference when they're sitting there teaching? Because if you remember, Jesus as a 12-year-old boy, remember he went into the synagogue? And the scripture says this, and he sat, and he heard, and he asked questions. Amen. Let me say that again. Jesus sat, he heard, and he asked questions as a 12-year-old boy. And then the scripture says, and they were amazed... Come on now. They were amazed at his questions. They were amazed um, at, even about his aura, about himself. Well, and then, so if you understand that, that tells us something that we need to sit, listen, come on now, and ask questions. 
And so when we get a hold of this, the, you know, then it goes on to say that before Jesus ever did anything, he had to get full of compassion. And so we see this here, and I'm not teaching on compassion. I just want to teach this one particular verse, and then we're going to go on. But if you see here in this book, after, after the, the lame, the dead boy rose, I don't have time to go in all that night. After he rose, the, 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 the people that were there to sit, and there came a fear, verse 16, and there came a fear on them, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen among us, and that God has visited his people. Now, that sounds really good, right? But I love the message translation this because the message translation actually gives it clarity. Because understanding now, this is after compassion was released. This was the thing that they said. They all realized that they were in a place of holy mystery. Now you have to understand when you come to church, you have to, you have to set in yourself, set in your heart, that you have come to a place of holiness. Come on now. It says that they had come to a place of holy mystery and that God was at work among them. How many believe tonight that God is at work among you tonight? Come on. God is at work among you. Right now, while you're sitting there, even though you may be going through some serious situations, you may like saying that there's just no way out. Know this, that God is working among you right now. While you're sitting right here, angels, ministry angels are working on your behalf. Come on, they're going to the north, the south, the east, and the west, and they're actually taking care of business right now while you're sitting right there. And so we have to, so there comes at a point in time where we, when we're listening, come on now, when we're listening, we're sitting and listening, there's got to be revelation knowledge that has to be presented to us. And we have to grab a hold of this revelation knowledge because it goes on to say this. It says they were, watch this, because this is what happens when you come to realization that God is present. I'm saying this to get to where we need to get to tonight. Because it said this, and they were quietly worshipful. In other words, they pondered. Come on now, they pondered at what they had just seen. And then they realized that they were in this holy place as they quietly pondered, as they quietly, quietly worshipped. Then all of a sudden, then because of what my brother had said earlier is the reason why the Lord gave me this, then they became what? Noisily. Oh, come on now. They became noisily grateful. In other words, faith began to be ignited. How is it that faith becomes to be ignited? Because of the spoken word. Everybody say spoken word. Because of the spoken word that was released. Come on now. You're not going to change anything. Listen, that Jericho wall did not come down with people thinking it down. Come on, that Jericho wall didn't come down meditating it down. Huh? That Jericho wall came down, why? Because they began to shout. In other words, they began to speak. Faith, there's no such thing as quiet faith. Huh? Let me say this. There's no such thing as silent faith. When faith, because faith is not a noun. And my wife be very, be very happy right now that I even said the word noun. Because <laughs> I hated school. But faith is not a noun. It's actually a verb. Amen. Verb meaning action. Amen. Huh, come on now. Because faith is an act or faith is action or act in progress. In order for faith to be activated, that means who, who's going to do the activating? Yes. We are. We're the ones that activate the faith. Well, how are we going to activate the faith? How are we going to? You got to come to a realization in your own life. That no matter where you're at, you're in a place of holiness or holy mystery. Come on now. About, listen, you are contaminated with the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on. Let me try this side over here. Come on now. You are contaminated with the Holy Ghost. Well, if you're contaminated with something, that means that somebody can catch it. Huh? Come on now. Come on now, we should be carriers. Come on now, we should be carriers of the Holy Ghost or carriers of the anointing. No, you're contaminated with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than what? He that is in the world. But the problem with this is, is that we are not activating, come on, what is in us. 
And we are allowing, watch this, we are allowing the temptations of the world to keep us from positioning ourselves, like my brother was just talking about a while ago, positioning ourselves, come on, in the right place. I preached a message several years ago when I was here, positioning yourself for a miracle. And I use this phrase, God, they, aren't you glad that God's got one more move? Huh, come on now. If anybody's, how many chess players do we have? Anybody know anything about chess? Well, that's four of you, okay? All right. Well, in chess, in, in, in the game of chess, you got these different pieces that move in different directions in different ways. Each one, come on now, each one has a job to do. One goes diagonally, one goes straight, one moves side to side. Come on. Each one has a job. It's almost like the body of Christ. Come on, aren't you glad that everybody doesn't have the same job? Because if we all had the same job, we couldn't accomplish what we need to accomplish. Amen. And aren't you glad we all don't have the same gifts and anointing? Yes. Come on now. We all have gifts and we all have different anointings on our life to, do, to accomplish what God has called us. That's why God said he's given something. Come on. Yes. Different forms of the, uh, of, of the body. That some are the head, some are the, or the arms, the legs. There's different parts of the body that God uses. All right? And so here we see this, that in chess... There's different pieces. Well, the ultimate is you got a queen that can do anything. Right. Kind of like my mama. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So she's the queen. So she actually, she, her hands are involved in everything. She moves in all different directions, right? right? Then you got the king. The king is the ultimate prize. All right. But the king can move in any direction, but he can only move one space at a time. So it is the queen's responsibility and all the other pieces' responsibility to protect the king. Right. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. Come on now. Yeah. And so we, as the children of God, it says this, that we are kings and priests. Come on now. So therefore, we're, when, we're, when we're flowing in the fullness of the Holy Ghost, the enemy is going to try to do everything he can, come on now, to defeat you. And this is why we need the different pieces in the body to help protect us. Come on now. Now watch this. Now, if you know anything about chess, you can move pieces. And the enemy can move, whoever you're facing can move pieces. And all of a sudden, they can get to a place where it looks like they got you. So they say this word, check. Because in their eyes, it looks like they got you. But until you hear the word checkmate, you've always got one more move. Huh, come on now. Come on now. That's the way, listen, that's the way God is with us. Look, the devil is constantly trying to come to you and position himself against you, and he's constantly saying, check. And in the natural, it may look like you're losing this. Come on now. But God says, you've got one more move. He says, I've got one more move. I said, ah, right, he's got one more move. Just because it looks like it's over, baby. Just because it's look like it's over, honey. It ain't over. See, we, right here, this is why we see when they, that's why they got, listen, quietly worshipful. But then they realize they're in a holy place of mystery. They realize God ain't done yet. Come on now. Look at this. Look at this verse. Look at this verse. Come on, look at this verse. It said they realized they were in one place of holy mystery that God was at work among them. They were quietly worshipful and the noisily grateful. Then this is what they said, calling out. In other words, they begin to, to talk amongst one another. Huh? When good things happen, you want to talk about it. And so they begin to talk once among themselves, and they said this, God is back. <laughs> Come on now. I told you, well, we're going to 2020 strong, and we're not going without God. Come on, now, no matter what you're facing right now, no matter what you're dealing with in life right now, I got news for you that God is still God and will always be God. He's got one, another move in your life. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said, aren't you glad you got, he's got one more move. So you may come here tonight and you think, well, you know, I'm at, I'm at ropes in, tie knot. Tie not and hang on because God is fixing to swing you out of this situation. Oh, come on now. 
I said, God's about to swing you out of this situation. Just when you think this is over, honey, it ain't over. As long as you got breath to breathe. I'm trying to contain myself. I said, I'm going to preach tonight. I'm going to teach. As long as you got breath in your body. That means as long as you got breath, then you got to praise. As long as you got breath in your body, you got to shout. And as long as you got to shout, guess what? There is an opportunity for a wall to come down in your life. I just need, I think we need to take a five second praise break. Glory! Glory! Hallelujah! 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 Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Yeah! Look at your neighbor and say, God is back. God is back. <laughs> Glory. Glory. He's got another move. No matter if you believe in God for a family member, if you believe in God for a situation like, I don't care what it looks like. <laughs> as long as you're willing to fight. Come on now. As long, listen, you've got to be willing to fight. As long as you're willing to fight, then God can make another move. <laughs> Go with me to Matthew chapter 4. That was an appetizer. <laughs> you know, sometimes appetizer is just as good as the main course. Yeah. Amen? I, I, matter of fact, I love, I'd rather just soon have appetizers. Me and my brother, I think we're pretty, we just like, we like appetizers. We like wings. Yeah. We like queso and salsa. Yeah. Nachos. <laughs> Y'all got spaghetti tonight. Yes. All right, so look here. So I, wa I want to, listen, because you got to understand, this is not going to do any good for you just hearing it. All right? This is not going to do any good if you're, if, unless you, unless just hearing it. You've got to see it for yourself. Huh? Come on now. You've got to know. Come on. Listen, you've got to do the same thing Jesus did. People think that Jesus just automatically knew everything. Jesus did not automatically know anything. If he knew everything, then why would he ask questions in the synagogue at 12 years old? Huh? If he knew everything, come on now, why would Jesus have to pray? Huh? If he already was walking as in the Son of God. No, Jesus prayed because he was building his life. He needed that relationship. Come on now. He was walking this earth just as like me and you are walking on this earth right now. He had to deal with the same devil that we had to deal with. Huh? Right here, look at Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1. We'll go ahead and read these real quick. Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, Now I want you to underline this part right here. It is written. Now, you have to understand, I, I got to stop right there. I like to go, I got to stop right there. Because you got you to understand something. The reason why Jesus could say this is because Jesus had been taught and he had read. Listen, you can't say it is written unless you read. Huh? Come on now. You cannot, listen, just because you heard John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, unless you've seen it for yourself, you cannot with all assurity guarantee me that that's in the Bible. And there's too many Christians walking around being parrots or parakeets, and they're just repeating, come on, what they're hearing and not what they're seeing because if, you're not, if you don't see it, then you don't know it. Just because you can quote, listen, because you've heard pastor or my dad say all the time, you know, uh, scripture after scripture, and you, if you've been here for a while, you, you know, he'll say certain scripture, and you can repeat what he said. Well, it, uh, that's fine and good, but unless you have seen it for yourself. Amen. Huh? Unless you have read it for yourself, unless you have meditated on it. That's why the Bible says to meditate in day and night. In other words, you've got to see it for yourself. You've got to get it inside of you, not just memorizing it. Yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. Come on now. Memorizing a scripture will not change your life. Huh? 
Well, if memorizing the scripture would, can change your life, then it would have changed Satan's life. Amen. Huh? He quotes scripture? You're fixing to find out. Satan can quote scripture, but yet it doesn't change. Come on. Doesn't change who he is. Doesn't change his past. Doesn't change his present. And it sure don't change his future. So just quoting scripture alone is not going to get you out of your situation. You got to know what you're saying. And the only way you know what you're saying is you got to see it and read it for yourself. So it goes on to say here, he says, it is written. Does it not say that? Come on now. It says here in verse 4, but he also said, it is written, man shall what? Not, not live by what? In other words, man shall not live by just natural things by itself. But watch this. But it says this. It says, but by every word that proceedeth out of your mouth. Huh? Come on now. Don't, listen, you got you to read it for yourself. You don't know what I'm saying unless you read it, unless you see it on the wall. Come on now. Not your mouth. Out of the mouth of God. Now, how is it that words are going to come out of the mouth of God? It's got, you got to see it. Come on now. You have to see it, and then you have to get it in your spirit, meditate in it there now. But why? Because we are his children, are we not? When you got born again, you got a blood transfusion. So when the enemy comes to you and scars you up and you begin to believe, and they do a DNA check, they're not going to see your natural DNA. They're going to see God's DNA. Come on now. And even by accident, whoo, Holy Ghost showed me this just a moment ago, and I, I tell you, I'm about to come out of my skin. Amen. Listen, even by accident, the blood can be applied. Come on now. When you get scarred up and you bleed, what are you bleeding? <laughs> huh? Come on now. See, Satan is retarded. He said they're sending his demons and his devils against you, and they're sitting there trying to cut you up and slay. Cut me. I want you to cut me so blood can be released and you won't cut me no more. <laughs> Come on now. There's power. If I can say power. power. There's power in the blood. Come on now. Why do you think Jesus didn't get bent out of shape because he was getting ready to hang on the cross? Huh? Why do you think he didn't get bent out of shape when they put the crown of thorns on his head? Look, before he ever got one stripe, before he ever put a nail in his hand, they put the crown of thorns on his head. And what happened when they put the crown of thorns on his head? And so I asked the Lord this. I asked him this question. I like asking questions. I figure if Jesus asked questions to the high priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, those that are supposed to be of high learning, I figured that the greatest high learning now is Jesus, so why not ask him? Right. He's our high priest. Amen. So I asked him, I said, Jesus, what was the purpose? What was, what was the purpose of the crown of thorns? What was it about the crown of thorns that was so prevalent and the cruci in your crucifixion and, and your death and burial and resurrection. What was it? And just as I'm clear as I'm talking to you, he said this. He said, I had to cover my mind with the blood before my body could ever take what it was about to take. Wow. Just as I'm clear as I'm talking to you. The first, listen, the first place he bled was over his head. So that tells me that the place that the enemy wants to attack you in, come on now, is your head. Come on now. And so if you can, listen, if you can conquer the mind, you can conquer the devil. So how are you going to conquer the mind? Through the blood of Jesus. Huh? Come on now. So when, when the crown of thorns was put on his head, you understand he was only fulfilling prophecy. What he was doing was fulfilling it is written. <laughs> All right, come on, come on. Y'all slow me down. All right, here we go. <laughs> then the devil took him, watch this. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, if thou be, if, if. Come on, seriously. Seriously. Don't look, the devil knows who he is. Huh? 
He didn't know who he was before the 40 days. But he sure knew, come on now, when Jesus went to John the Baptist, come on, remember the story? When Jesus went to John the Baptist and he got baptized, Satan still didn't know who he was until he got baptized by John the Baptist. And when he went, listen, he went down one way. <laughs> there is power. Boy, if I could sing. Look, Jesus went down one way. But he came up another way. Huh? Come on now. Every time we come to church, it should be like a Holy Ghost baptism. Who says you got to be baptized one time? Huh? There's nowhere in the Bible it says you have to be baptized one time. You can be baptized as many times as necessary. Because if it's necessary, then it's necessary. See, I, I got, I got, can I tell you a little secret? I baptize myself every day. I do. I baptize myself every day. Not only do I baptize, when the water comes, I'm just, I'm just saying, thank you, Holy Ghost, that whatever's trying to attach itself to me, I'm just getting washed right now. Yeah. But before I ever get to that point, I baptize myself in the blood. Yeah. I get up in the morning. I was praying this morning, I got, you know, and I hadn't done it in a couple, this particular way a couple of days, but I do it a lot. I just sit there and pretend, or not pretend, but I see myself just dipping in the blood of Jesus and just flowing it over me, just pouring it on me. Because, see, I know there's healing in the blood. <laughs> see, I know there's forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Come on now, I know that there's justification and sanctification and holiness in the blood of Jesus. So I just wash. <laughs> Come on now, I just wash myself in the blood. There's a song we used to sing, What Can Wash Away My Sins? <laughs> well, in order for the blood to wash away your sins, come on now. It's got to be applied. Without it being applied, honey, guess what? You're walking around dirty. That's right. That's right. And then you want to know why in the world things aren't happening in your life. And you want to know how come you sitting there being a parakeet and nothing's working. Right. Yeah. Huh? Come on. It is written. Come on. It is written that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But you have to meditate on that, and you have to get it inside the very depths of who you are. Come on now. It's not something that just rolls off your mind. Listen, just stuff rolling off your mind ain't going to come. It's got to come out of your spirit. Look, when you're saying something, you got to know what you're saying. you got to mean it. Come on now. There's a difference in saying, devil, leave me alone. Would you please, I can't deal with you today. Would you, I can't deal with you today. I just can't. I just can't. The Bible says I'm more than a conqueror. I know what the Bible says. That ain't doing squat. Huh? Because if you're in that position like that, it, you, you don't have authority. You don't understand the authority that you have. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, the devil should never be able to steal your joy. Huh? The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Look, I don't care what the situation is like. You just start thinking yourself happy. It, look, I figured if it worked for Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Remember Acts? Uh -huh. Remember he stood in front of King Agrippa? Right. Huh? Right. He said this, none of these things move me. Now, you understand, Paul was attacked. He was beat 39 strikes multiple times. Not just one, not just two, multiples. He was beaten. He was thrown in prison. He wrote the New Testament, two-thirds of the New Testament, in the prison. He didn't write it sitting in, 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 in a mansion, kicking back with his foot on a footstool. No. He didn't get downloaded in his comfort zone. He got downloaded. Watch this. He got downloaded in the midst of his troubles. Come on now. In the midst of his pain, his natural pain, in the midst of his hurt, Paul got downloaded, and he was able to, to make it so by putting it on paper. And once he put it on paper, that means it is written. So if you have to, if you have to, whatever you're dealing with, instead of just quoting it, how about getting a piece of paper and a pen? Or get your tablet, because it, in, in today's society, it means the same thing. And sit there and put it on your tablet and say, it is written. No matter what the enemy is fighting you with, no matter what the devil's coming against you with, no matter what he's saying to you or trying to talk about you, you just need to find some word, get in it, find it, and then put it on there. So therefore, when the devil comes to you tomorrow trying to deal with the same situation, you can say, no, no, Mr. Devil. <laughs> no, no, uh -uh. I've drawn a bloodline right here, and it 
is written. I'm not putting up with your mess today. Oh, glory. I said, oh, glory. And so we go on to say this. So in verse 6, and he said to him, if thou be the son of God, if, if. See, that's what the devil, see, the devil is trying to get you to question Come on now, trying to get to, get to you to question who you are. Because he would have never said to Jesus, if you be the son of God. So that means to tell me that he was trying to get Jesus to question his own deity. Amen. Well, if Satan came to Jesus to question his deity, what do you think he's going to do to you? Because if you're a born again Christian and you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, then you've had a blood transfusion then everything else is just a symptom. Amen. Huh? Matter of fact, isn't it interesting, even in the natural, the doctors will ask you, when you go to the doctor, the first thing they ask you, what's your symptoms? Huh? And isn't it interesting that on the building, it says practice. So here we are, as intelligent human beings, that we will literally put our faith in a place that's practicing. <laughs> huh? Well, we're going to try this. There ain't no guarantee, but we're gonna, let's just try this. I'm telling you, we're going to try this. Well, we're going to change your medication. Look, we're going to adjust your medication. Because when they say that, that means uh, what, what we thought, uh, what, we, what, what we guessed, guessed, guessed. Huh? Come on. And we're going to sit there and put our faith in something like that when God says uh, that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Come on there. And therefore, if any man believe in Christ, he is a new creature in Christ. Come on. That's what the Word says. 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by his stripes. Actually was, were, past tense. So in other words, you're trying to get something that you already got. And so we're going to go into a place of practice to get something for them to try on us, to put some foreign object in our body that our body was never designed to have. But see, you're not going to be able to discount that unless you know that it is written. Now, I'm not telling you to give up your medical home and thereby throw your medication out. That's not what I'm saying. Because everybody's faith is at a different level. You understand what I'm saying? But what I am saying this, you can build up. Yeah. Come on, let's take one victory at a time. Yeah. Listen, you can't get to the top of the mountain until you take the first step. Right. Look, I mean, I wish I had the ability to jump. Take one jump and I could be right here. But I don't have that ability. But I have the ability to take one step. Right. Then I have ability as I conquer this step, I have the ability to take another step. Come on now, and as I had the ability to conquer this step, then I had the ability that I would come to another step. Then when I had the ability to conquer this one, then I'll get to this one. I'll deal with this one, wipe this out, and then I'll come to this one. Amen. Huh, come on now. To whoever your ability is, some people can step right here and get on up there like this. Huh? I got to miss. I got to skip the last two steps. Why? Because I have the ability to do those two steps. But if I don't have the ability, I do have the ability to get to the next step. The final outcome is I'm going to get where I'm supposed to get to as a born-again child of God. Amen. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, if the word says it is written, you know, that's one of the most, you know, there's only two people in the Bible that said it all the time. It was Jesus and Paul. And think about it, who made the biggest difference? Huh? They kept saying, it is written. How is it that they could say it is written? Because they have read it. And they have put it inside them. Come on now. And so therefore, when they said it is written, it was power being released out of them. Huh? Come on now, look at verse 7. So Jesus said, I got five minutes, all right? So Jesus said unto him, it is written again. Come on now. Everybody say, again. again. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. See, he's quoting scripture here. He's just not coming up with this stuff. Yes. Jesus is not winging it. 
Oh, come on now. We got too many Christians trying to wing it. Huh? Just because they saw one preacher say this or they heard one preacher say that, and so they'll just say, well, they said it, it worked for them. I'm going to say it. No, that's winging it. Huh? You have no power and authority in winging it. Huh? No, you got to get it inside you. Jesus wasn't winging it. Jesus was quoting Scripture. Because, hey, listen, he said, it is written, and then boom, he put forth what was written. Now look at verse 8. And again the devil took him, and again, everybody say again. That means that this is not a one-time event. Huh? Now, I'm, not here to scare, I'm, not going, I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to put some stuff in you so that you won't be scared. But can I just tell can I be honest with you tonight? Let's just, be, let's just have an honesty meeting. The devil's real. And he just don't like you. I know that's deep. You know, and I know that's going to hurt some feelings. But I just want you to know that he don't like you. Huh? And he's real. All right? We're not, listen, being a Christian doesn't mean that you live a lie. Huh? We're all tempted in different ways. Huh? We're all attacked in different ways, aren't we, Pastor Jason? We're all attacked. I'm attacked. Pastor Jesus attacked. My brother's attacked. We're all attacked at different ways and at different times and in different areas. But it's what you do after the attack. Huh? Listen, your first response, your first response will always, everybody say always. Always. Always determine what will happen next. Huh? Come on now. I said your first response. So if your first response says it is written... Because you know you have read, you have heard, and you have read, and it's set inside you. Come on now. Then that means when you say that, the devil, you put the devil on the run. And eventually, everybody say eventually. Eventually. Because sometimes he goes away right away, but sometimes he don't. He didn't go right away with Jesus. We're talking the Son of God here. We're talking somebody just got baptized. the, The Holy Spirit came and set upon him, and God spoke over him. Everybody don't get to hear that voice. Everybody don't get to experience a loud voice coming over you. This is my son or daughter in whom I'm well pleased. All of us don't get to experience that. But we get to experience it is written. Huh? Come on now. And so we see here Jesus as the son of, being recognized as the son of God. And he already said this, my son, so Jesus knew, so Satan knew who he was. So here he comes here and he tempts him. And again, the devil, watch this in verse 8. And again, the devil took him up an exceedingly high mountain, tempting him and showing him all the kingdoms of the world. Showing him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. So that tells me that in this universe that we live in is amazing. Huh? It must be so amazing that Satan felt like that he could actually tempt Jesus with the things of this world. Huh? We know that everybody loves power. Everybody loves money. Come on now. Huh? Everybody loves things. So that tells me that these are amazing things that's out there for us. So much so that Satan tempted Jesus. He said all these things in the whole universe. He began to tempt him and sent him up on the high mountain and showed him all the kings of the world and the glory. Now, it's interesting we see this word glory, but it's in a little g. And when you see it in a little g, that means it's not coming from God. It's like little g gods. Huh? Come on now. They ain't no power in little. <laughs> huh? They ain't no power in little. Come on now. So we see here, so he showed him the glory, and he said unto him, all these things will I give you. That tells me that Satan actually has stuff. Huh? Come on now. That means that he, ha- that he has stuff. Now, I'm going to really mess with your head. He actually has the ability to bring a counterfeit healing. I was preaching in Florida uh, a couple years ago, 
And um, I went, and after one of the meetings that night, the pastor, and we went out to go get something to eat. And he asked me, he said, have you heard about this guy? And uh, I said, no. He said, well, he's a Satanist priest. And he's down in Miami area. And he's holding revivals. He said, he's actually, people are getting healed at his meetings. Well, actually, this is not the first time I've heard this. Because back in the day, um, I believe it was Ozzy Osbourne that bit the bat off. And remember, he would fly in on a cable. And they said they have documents of him as he flew in in that concert, right before, as the concert got restarted. He flew in as his shadow came over people. People were getting healed. That's why they flocked to his meetings. So that tells me right here that Satan was offering him a counterfeit. See, Satan would do everything he can to offer you a counterfeit. Come on now. Just to turn your back on what is written. Huh? Amen. Amen. And so we, that's the reason why we have to be so careful who we allow in our air atmosphere, who we allow in our, come on, in our territory. Amen. Because Satan will send, do you know Satan will send folks in church to you? Y'all do realize he goes to church, right? Amen. You do know he's the best church goer in the world. Right. His attendance is better than anybody else has ever been. He has, listen, he has no absentees on his document for Sundays and Wednesdays. He showed up at every Sunday school class. He showed up at every church service, every revival, every meeting, every home meeting, everywhere. He has a perfect attendance every time the word is present. That's right. hmm. But yet it doesn't change him. So we see here, so watch this. So he said to him, all these things will I give thee, watch this, if thou will just fall down or kneel down and what? Worship. Now that word, you understand, worshiping him means that you are saying that I am God. Right. Right. Huh? In other words, what he wanted Jesus, because the moment Jesus did this, his power would have been released. Come on now, his anointing would have left him him because he began because he would bow down to God or we can use this there's a Greek translation says idol the idol of Satan so we see here anything that is not of God becomes an idol so there are people literally that have created idols in their lives and they're worshiping those idols more so than they're worshiping God, and they don't know why in the world. Come on now. They think that TV or watching a program is more important than coming to church. Right. See, listen, if we want to be 2020 strong, then we got to change our mentality. Amen. If we want to be 2020 strong, we got to change uh, how we perceive things and how we act in certain situations. Amen. I remember growing up as a kid, church was it. I mean, we didn't, everything didn't revolve around mom and dad or around our sports. Our sports and everything else that we did evolved. We didn't, our vacations even evolved around church. Because if there was revival going on, guess what? We ain't going to no vacation. <laughs> it was so much so that my dad, when we got, when we went to high school, you know, we were playing sports in high school. My dad went and met with the coaches and said, my son cannot practice um, on Wednesday nights. If he practices, he has to be done in time to go to church. Huh? Now, so today, folks think you lost your mind. Well, I just can't, I can't do this past this certain time because I got to be in church. I can't do this on Sunday because I get to be in church. Well, that's, that's a lost idea because, see, Satan has come in and changed our priorities. Listen, if we want the Holy Ghost to move in our life and we want the fullness of God flowing in our life, come on now, then we have got to change our priorities. Come on now, and we got to find out. Listen to me. We got to find out what is written. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet and give God a shout of praise. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, there's no such thing as silent faith. Hallelujah. Come on now. I said there's no such thing as silent faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. It is impossible, it is impossible to say, and I mean, I mean, present it. You can be a parakeet and quote it, but saying, when you say something, actually the definition means that you know it. 
All right, we're not quoting, but it is impossible to say it and never have read it. So I challenge you tonight. I won't get a chance to see you no more this year. But I challenge you tonight to go home and meditate on the Word this week. Get in the Word for yourself. Whatever situation you're dealing with, find Scripture, but then meditate on it. So that, when, that so the next day, when Satan comes to you and finds you in that situation, you're not going to say, Mr. Devil, leave me alone. You're going to say, Mr. Devil, it is written. It is written. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Every head bowed, every eye closed real quickly. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your anointing and power of your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for this is the day that you have made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it today. Father, we thank you that we're not the same, that we leave here differently, Father, because we've been saturated in the Word, and we've been saturated in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. But, Father, right now, peradventure, there'll be somebody here that doesn't know Jesus. Or you may have accepted Jesus at one time, but your life is not the way it's supposed to be. And you know you need a change. You're not here by accident tonight. This is a divine appointment from the Holy Ghost. And I'm here to pray with you. I'm not here to embarrass you, but I'm here to pray with you. We're going to get free tonight, and your life's going to be changed. If that's you, and you want me to pray with you, just lift your hand right now real quickly over this counter. No one looking around me and you. Yes, ma'am, I see that hand. Someone else, real quickly. I know there's at least two. Come on, there's others here. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand. Someone else. You know you need to turn it around right now. You know you need to turn it around. Don't leave here with the devil victorious. Come on. Anyone else, real quickly. All right, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to pray. And that person that raised their hand, if you would, I want you to step out right where you are. Not to embarrass you, step and come and meet me right here because I'm placing myself here with you first. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know the reason why I did this? I had you come out? Because I wanted you to make the devil mad. <laughs> I make him mad all the time. But I needed you to make him mad because when you stepped out, you stepped out of your comfort zone. So much. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Yeah. But you know what? The devil's running now. Because as you walk up here, you walk into a different realm of the Holy Spirit. And your life's never going to be the same. I promise you. You just keep coming. You keep coming. I'm getting ready to pray. And when we finish praying, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you're going to be a different person. And we're going to say, no, devil. No more. We're going to say, no more. So everybody point your hand this way. Say, Heavenly Father. We thank you for being a God of many chances. Father, we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Father, I thank you for saturating me with the Holy Ghost. Devil, you have no right and no authority from this day forth in Jesus' name. Now say, it is written, I am who God says I am, and I can be who God says I can be. How about that? So I'll no longer be a victim. Huh? No more. No more. Glory to God. There's, there's Tiffany. She just wants to say hi to you and, and just share with you for a moment. God bless you. Come on, give God a shout of praise.